Hi everyone. Welcome to Ellen Campus. I am Sashikant. In this video, I am going to give you an overview of the new intercompany trade functionality introduced in Ellen 10.5. Let's look at the agenda of this session. I'll try to give you an idea about the intercompany trade in general, the business value that the new functionality is going to add, the business requirements, high level solution overview with a short demo, and finally we will recap what we have discussed and close this session. If you are not familiar with the intercompany transactions, this slide should help you out in understanding the fundamentals. Assume a multinational company manufactures cars and each component of the car comes from different parts of the world. Factory A in Brazil produces the chassis. Factory B in China takes care of the body. Factory H located in Germany produces the gearbox, gets the components from different countries and makes the car under its brand. This sounds good, but have you ever wondered how do they do business to transfer the components from one country to another country and provide the services among themselves? Who sets the price? The answer is the multinational company sets the price for each transaction which is called transfer price. Based on the transfer pricing rules, when two parties exchange goods, services, intangible properties and any financial arrangements, the price should be the same as if the two companies were independent of each other. So this is also known as the arm's length principle. So all the multinational groups have to make sure that they comply with the arm's length principle so the profits realized within a country are justifiable. So do you really want me to hold on and say that this is not a new topic and we already have this functionality in the previous version of LN as well? Yes you are correct, this is not completely a new topic, however there are lot of enhancements done on this topic. So let me move to the next slides so you would understand why I am quoting this topic as new and important for you. What's new? Though there are number of enhancements that have been done on the intercompany trade solution, I would like to highlight the important enhancements here. The intercompany trade solution supports the legal regulations. For example, when an engineer works on a project of another financial entity, the booking of hours and expenses can result in an intercompany trade order, optionally with an invoice. The new pricing options are made available in LN 10.5 based on the transfer pricing guidelines such as profit split. For intercompany transactions, a dedicated invoice layout can be used. From the financial reporting perspective, with the new solution, it is possible to use the cost structure of the selling entity at the receiving entity. For example, in case of a warehouse transfer, the cost structure of the shipping warehouse can be used for the receiving warehouse. In this way, the cost at the start of the internal supply chain can be visible throughout the whole internal supply chain. Also. To achieve a better consistency in the financial reporting across the entities, the purchase invoice can be booked in the same period as the sales invoice. The new solution uh, supports the approval mechanism, so the intercompany trade orders can be approved both by the selling organization and the buying organization before the transaction takes place. This can also be modeled in Ion workflow. The last one is the usability, so with the new solution more flexibility has been given in defining processing of the intercompany trade relationships and transactions. 
For example, a purchase invoice can be generated automatically based on a sales invoice. Also, uh, there are number of workbenches and dashboards that have been introduced for better visibility and control of the intercompany trade transactions. So let's look at the business value. The intercompany trade solution allows the enterprises to allocate the profits across the legal entities to optimize the overall results of the enterprise. The legal regulations are met with the new intercompany trade functionality. For example, the intercompany transactions between legal entities have to be accompanied by an intercompany invoice, especially when borders are crossed. It is also possible to distinguish the financial entities as business units for proper management accounting and reporting per financial entity. Let's look at the business requirements. A typical large enterprise where the intercompany transactions are high in numbers, it is very essential to have better visibility on the transactions. For example, visibility on the intercompany orders that are ready to process or orders that require approval or the margin that the selling company is going to realize etc. At the same time, handling these transactions and master data maintenance should be flexible enough for the users. The new functionality should not add additional steps or process to follow. Well, the new intercompany trade functionality allows creation and processing of intercompany transactions with ease. We will see when we move to the demo. The key requirement is also to avoid the disruptions on the operational processes. For example, in the earlier versions, the shipment process would be put on hold if the commercial price is not defined or missing. Imagine an user getting an alert early in the business process about it so he can take the action and avoid the disruption at the shipment process. How cool it is, right? So in the new intercompany trade solution, it is possible to view and modify the pricing details early in the business process and therefore it can be corrected if really required. So let's look at the solution overview. When an order is created in LN such as sales order, a check will be performed to determine if the transaction is an internal trade transaction. For example, if the finance company of the enterprise unit related to the sales office is different from the finance company of the enterprise unit linked to the warehouse, the transaction is considered as intercompany trade. We also call it as triangular invoicing scenario, right? So if the transaction is an intercompany trade, an intercompany trade order will be generated in the background. This order contains all the details about the intercompany trade, such as the commercial price of the item, the pricing model, etc. When the actual transaction occurs, a transaction line would be generated for the intercompany trade order. The line can be released to invoicing module and a sales invoice can be created and posted in the sales company. Based on the sales invoice, a purchase invoice can be created and processed in the purchase company. For the demo, I'll use the following multi-site scenario. Assume that an enterprise has a production facility in Mumbai and the sales office is located in Bangalore. The sales office has received an order from a customer for one air conditioner unit. The total sales price is 24,500 rupees. The goods are produced in Mumbai production facility and from there de delivered directly to the customer. An intercompany trade order would be created in the background for this internal trade. The production facility in Mumbai is the selling organization and the Bangalore sales office is the buying organization in this case. The pricing model that I am going to consider for this demo is sales order price cross with a markdown of 10% so the internal transfer price would be 22,050 rupees. When the goods are delivered, 
Mumbai production facility will issue an internal invoice to the Bangalore sales office and an external invoice will be sent to the customer from the Bangalore sales mm-hmm. office. Let's get into the product and see how the intercompany trade really works as per our scenario. First of all, let's open the sales order intake workbench to create a new order. My customer is 1004 so let's pick that. Let's give this sales office based on our scenario we should select the sales office code as bangalore sales office so let's do that and save the header the other details are uh, the normal now i am going to create a sales order line for the air conditioning unit when i do that the quantity i am selecting it as 1 the price defaulted automatically as 24500 rupees make sure that the delivery takes place from the mumbai warehouse as per our scenario so i am going to leave that field as it is save the order line since the legal entities are different an intercompany trade order will also be created in the background So let me open and show you the intercompany trade order. When we access the intercompany order from the sales order session, remember that we are accessing the order from the Bangalore sales office perspective. So Bangalore sales office is buying the goods from Mumbai. Hence the order is intercompany order purchase. Let me explain you the details of this intercompany trade order purchase. So the header part shows the from and to side entities. In this case, the from entity is Mumbai, which means Mumbai is selling the goods, and the to entity is Bangalore Sales Office, which is buying the goods. The price origin can also be seen here, which is defaulted from the effective trade agreement between these two entities. The order amount is twenty two thousand fifty rupees, which is ten percent lesser than the sales amount. This is as per our scenario, right? The status of the order is ready to process, which means the approval step has been completed automatically in the background. This is as per the setup that I have currently. The user can review the details here and make the changes if necessary. Make a note that if you change the data now, both the selling and buying parties should approve the order manually. Okay, so if we see the transaction lines tab here, we don't see any data in the transaction lines. Once we deliver the goods, we can see the transaction lines here. So let's process our sales order. I am going to approve my sales order so the status change to approved let me open the status and execute the activities i am not going to explain these activities because these are uh, standard activities that we usually do So once we confirm the shipment we can come back to our sales order and check the intercompany trade order once again Now we can see the transaction line for the intercompany trade since the actual transaction had happened As per the current setup I have it is mandatory to generate an intercompany invoice so let's go to invoicing 360 and invoice the billable line for that first let me open the intercompany trade 
work page sales from the perspective of mumbai company because in this case mumbai is the selling organization they are going to invoice the bangalore sales office okay so open invoice 360 session and create an invoice for the intercompany sales now let's come back to the sales order and open the intercompany trade order purchase once again since i have created the sales invoice i can see the sales invoice number here for the transaction line next is to move to the purchase side we can quickly generate a purchase invoice based on the intercompany sales invoice using this particular option this will create the transaction and the matching will be done automatically we can see this purchase invoice information from the intercompany trade order in which we can see the cross reference to the sales invoice in this way if we look at the whole invoicing flow the base would be the internal sales invoice the other finance side topics are not discussed in this session since those are the regular processes that finance team will usually execute so that's the end of our product demo so let's summarize what we have discussed with the new internal trade solution users can monitor and control the intercompany trade process effectively the steps involved in the intercompany trade order can be automated without an additional load on the users only in case of exceptions users have to approve the orders customers can also use ion workflow for approvals better visibility on the planned transactions historic transaction margin details and reporting capabilities have been added with new dashboards and workbenches thanks for watching this video i hope you like it if you have any questions leave them in the comment section subscribe to the channel and never miss an update from ln campus